know, we're not just going sailing here. This is truly a voyage. We're, we're heading across the Atlantic and we need to make sure that our ship, ourselves and our students are ready to make that voyage. The Transatlantic Crossing is a summer program at SEA. It's a five week program. We spend one week in Woods Hole uh, doing shore component work and then four weeks on our voyage from Cape Cod all the way across to Ireland. Students take one of two classes, so either they take leadership in a dynamic environment or they take practical oceanographic research. So then ultimately we all move down to the ship as kind of one unit and we begin to form this really neat community. Um, it takes a little while to get going, but you know, we've got a month to get across the Atlantic and I'm really, really interested to see how this community develops. You know, it's the combination of the students and the professional crew and everybody brings these different things from their own lives uh, together to this 134 foot boat. We're stuck together. There's no, there's no way off when you're in the middle of the Atlantic. And I think that uh, everybody, when we get to the other side, when we get to Ireland, will realize that they had something special. And I really love watching that happen. When I explain our three-phase system to students before they've even come to the ship and if they're just beginning the program, I usually give it to them in the context of a progressive opportunity. We're going to start out by teaching you the skills that you need, and then you'll get a chance to put those into practice, and then eventually we'll give you the responsibility for executing them on your own. Is this the fisherman's downhaul? Yep. Okay. I want to experience something new cliche as that is and I just I didn't know what I was looking for I didn't know what I wanted I didn't know what this feeling was but I just started typing in words like ocean started looking up and for some reason this program popped up and I like clicked on it and the first for some reason it was the transatlantic crossing page and I didn't even really see the other programs and I just read it and I just remember having this absolute sensation of like wow that's right. That's just what I want to do. What? I studied marine science in school and graduated with a degree in marine biology. Thought I was going to, you know, save the world or whatever. And went to work for a nonprofit. And uh, I didn't like working in an office. So I thought the best way to have an impact would be to do some sort of education. But SCA was always like the place you wanted to work if you were doing SEAL training. And especially for me, who was interested in science, it was like the holy grail. Science and sailing. Yeah, I mean, this program is so much more than just marine science and sailing. It's teaching young people to be self-reliant and individuals, but also members of a team. And it's just so cool. All the way down home. Okay, let's get a couple sail times for this guy. So it looks like this, uh, Tropical Storm Colin will end up tracking to our east, southeast. So I guess our strategy to think about is waiting for this to pass by. So it stinks because it's going to um, delay us a little bit on our track, but it, you know, it's not something that we want to tangle with. I think there's a lot of things that go into uh, voyage. The students just don't necessarily see all the planning that went into it and all the safety precautions that went into picking our route and making the decisions that we made. But that's fine because it allows them to focus on the experience that they came here for, which is learning to love uh, the ocean in a different way. Uh, in other words, being on it for a long period of time. We all have to worry about different things. And if, uh, if they can focus on having fun and like pushing their own limits, then and that's exactly what I want.
this just seemed really cool and I really love science and I had an internship in a lab um, last summer and really didn't like being like confined to the lab all the time. I felt like I needed to be outdoors more. I grew up on Cape Cod just kind of um, surrounded by the ocean. Never really thought anything of it. I never really realized that there were people who have never seen the ocean. I kind of started realizing um, how really unique it is that I have been able to grow up in a place um, that is just surrounded by water and also by science um, with Woods Hole. Um, so those two things kind of like fed together. So my project is focused on plastic and looking at plastic size distribution um, throughout our cruise. And what we're doing is we work on land, kind of get the basics of oceanography down. And then once we get to sea, um, we basically see how doing what we did on land, like the hypothesis and everything, translates to working in the field and having to deal with the challenges that come with that. If we had it on board, we'd be able to tell. Do you think the leaves look like they are wide or really narrow? There's more coming towards you. Uh, so my goals there are to have students uh, envision a research question of their own that falls within the scope of where we're going and what our capabilities are on the ship and then carry that project all the way through. So they develop their hypotheses, they figure out what approach, what methods they might use, and then in the end, they've collected a bunch of data, analyzed it, and prepared a formal written paper. Uh, to me, the end product is less important than the process, and I'm really interested in their getting excited about conducting research and asking a lot of questions and seeing just what that looks like. This year, our projects ranged uh, from physical to chemical to biological oceanography, which is always fun to have a whole variety of things going on on board. We had students studying phytoplankton, the smallest marine plants, where we find them and what the community is like. Uh, we also had students studying zooplankton, uh, specifically a fish that migrates vertically through the water column and has these uh, bright cells that make it identifiable at night. And so they were asking who's out there and where do we find them? And then we also had a group of students looking at the water column. So which waters did we sail through? What currents did we experience? So the physical processes that define the ocean. And then the last group was looking at marine pollution. And from a student standpoint, we find that we now have a reputation as being experts in studying marine debris. And that brings them excited about the topic. I'll never forget the first few weeks of college were so weird because every there were all these events of like hang out with all these people and do all this and da 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 and you were surrounded by people you were living in dorms with like 20 people on a floor and each floor was like in a house which had like 80 people in it and then you would go to dining halls and there were people all around you but you didn't hear their stories and I don't know if stories are the only way you get to know people I don't think so but I felt so lonely, even though I was surrounded physically by all these people. But the detrimental side of that for me was that it was starting to paralyze me. I really, I couldn't, I didn't know what I was doing or where I was going. So being on a boat, while I do enjoy standing at the bow and going off <laughs> into the spirally vortex of my mind, there's also a practicality and a day-to-day -day necessity to do things, to make decisions, to put up sales, to take down sales. And although I cannot necessarily figure out when or why to do that, there's an understanding that it needs to happen. There's not a lot of space in my mind of questions of like, well, what if we didn't raise that sale? How do we feel about raising that sale? There's kind of a, a refreshing simplicity in doing something. I feel like I really push students pretty hard to their limits and I think a lot of students react really well, respond to that and really push themselves. Some students just turn off and they can't handle it. And so it's, for me it's been a learning process trying to reach those students. 
Okay, I was just doing a deck wash and now my face is covered in salt. You know, Kiara's the, are the most fun to interact with. Because you, you, they come and you're like, I have no idea what to, do, what to do with you. But there's so much potential for growth there, and I feel like we've already been seeing it. Just in the last week, I had uh, one student, she was one of those students where you just, you're like, why did you pick this program? But uh, she was pretty uncomfortable with everything, and uh, one day we struck the gym, and we're going up there to furl it, and I was like, go, all right, head on out, you're gonna go furl the gym, head on the head, and she's like, uh-uh, and I was like, uh-huh, you're going out there. And she just was like, no, I'm not. And I was like, yes, you are. This is a learning experience. You're going to do this. She's like, ah. And so she went out there and, you know, there was a lot of yelling and she was nervous. But she did it with her peers. And when she came back, you know, later that day, she was like, that was awesome. And so I was like, yes, cool. That was awesome. Not the furling of the jib, but the fact that you did it and you appreciated it. So with these uh, building seas, you know, the winds are a little stronger than predicted. In here, they're predicted at about 20 knots and we're seeing about 30 to 35. Um, so, you know, we try and make the decision at this point is whether, um, you know, whether we want to keep pressing on or um, maybe heave to for the evening. And I think that's probably the decision that we'll make. Uh, the galley was trashed today from food flying all over the place. So if we're able to uh, let people sleep a little better, clean up the galley, there's less risk of injury, all that kind of stuff. We're, we're pretty far from anywhere, so. Oh, yes, egg spill. Yes. We lost some good ones here. People are always hungry. Slightly concerning, but good for job security. But they're cold and they're tired, or they're hot and they're tired, or they're just bored and they're hungry all the time. And I get to feed them. It's also the place where everyone comes to cry. Uh, deck handed for a couple trips and then they needed a steward, an mm -hmm. assistant steward. And it was actually just very serendipitously right at the point of my life where everything, where I wasn't going to work, where I was working at. And they said, can you be in Hawaii in 10 days? It just worked out really well. Unlike dolphins, we're a dime a dozen. And the little ones, they just make you squeal. I know, we're having just lunch and a show daily now. It's true. I try to like keep my shit together, especially when the orcas were here. Everyone was like, whales, whales. And I walked out and they were right here. And I was like, yeah! Oh my gosh! <laughs> So 100 count is when we take um, what we've gotten from our Newston net um, and we take a little tiny scoop of it out um, and we go through and count 100 of whatever happens to be there. But what we're finding is that we usually find um, greater amounts of plastic sort of in the middle of the Atlantic and um, in more coastal areas there doesn't seem to be as much. Well, I think that this has impacted me a lot in like the way that I'm going to choose products and think about, you know, recycling, um, making sure that everything gets reused and, you know, as little garbage um, goes in as possible because it ends up somewhere. All right, five, four, three, two, one, go. <laughs> 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 Woo!
Three ninety six. What oh is God. that? That's crap. <laughs> Sir, we can't well. show any of the science department. There. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Let's go. Let's go, Kramer. Let's go, Kramer. Two, one, done. <laughs> Four fifty eight. Jesus. Wow. That's four and a half hundred pounds. I just won. Scott is gonna be singing a sea shanty in front of the entire crew. All right. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a while since I've done this one, so I'll probably forget some of the words. But I could use your help. Up stood the steward of our gallant ship, and a well-spoken steward was she. <laughs> I care much more for my pots and my pants than I do for the bottom of the sea. And we poor sailors are skipping up aloft while the land lovers lie down below, 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 while the land lovers lie down below. We have to a certain extent have our own version of sea shanties. You know, when people sing the pop tunes, it's like no different from sea shanties back in the day. They're, they're, I really I really like them. I feel like they've become a novelty, a, a curiosity. Nobody uses them anymore. They're not like a part of the culture, not part of shipboard culture, which it's like cool to learn about those things and see them, but it's sad too that they've gone away to a certain extent. It is confusing when I hear that word leadership though because to me that makes me feel like I'm never really going to desire a role of being that person to make the decisions and to be giving people direction and telling them do this, do that and then also hope that we can be friends. And I think the more you build your understanding of each other, the more you can kind of work with a person. And when you really take that time, and we're taking it, we're looking at it through the lens of leadership. But to take that time to really think about our actions with each other. The leadership in a dynamic environment class is about uh, exploring one's own and others' leadership styles, uh, sort of methods of leading in different situations, um, including things like giving feedback and reflecting as a group. Um, and then putting that all into practice. So there's a little bit of front-loading of, of skills and vocabulary and content, and then we go to the ship and those students really spend a lot of time thinking hard about what they're experiencing here, how they can uh, work more effectively as a team, how they can facilitate that among other students, and growing in their own leadership um, by the end of the program. And I would say a lot of my leadership style is firmly based in captains I've sailed under and professors I've worked under, both good qualities, things I really liked about them that I've kind of slowly adopted, but also qualities that I really didn't like and actively tried to avoid doing them myself. I think, I, I think back to other experiences where I've been the scared person and like looking up to like the captain or whatever and like they're like calm and composed and they're just like, yep, this is just another day on the job. And like that's, I, that's important because that instills confidence in the people below you. Because if, if the captain's like freaking out, everybody's gonna be like, ah, who's in charge here? So, I mean, that's definitely something I work to do. I know that I need to project that image. All right, so those are called Kelvin Helmholtz clouds. They're very rare, they only last for a few minutes. If you look back there, after this muster's over, they'll be gone, all right? What do I get out of this? Why do I do this? I don't know. You know, I uh, stepped away from the Coast Guard after going to sea, and now here it's the same kind of thing, but in a different way. And although there's challenges, like I think these challenges are um, a little bit more fun at this stage in my life where we get to kind of uh, help people experience the sea for the first time, uh, push their limits, have the high highs and the low lows and really grow as a person. I've also been looking at the sea surface temperature. We sampled here in the cold water and then moved back into the warmer water. And it definitely impacts the currents that we see, which gives us uh, some additional speed. And then it gives us um, just nicer conditions in the warmer water. So, the water temperature is 23 degrees C, which is the highest that we've seen so far on the trip. So if anybody wants to jump in the water, this would be the opportunity. There are a few rules.
right as I got in the yard, I just like looked out and there was like this big poof and then another big poof and then this whale like near hole and I was like, ah! I was like, hold on! I was like, hold on. Picture perfect. It was, yeah. I give them a little bit of information about what to expect from phase three. I think just enough that they're curious and they're excited about the opportunity, but not so much that uh, they feel like they have a really clear plan because everything's always dynamic in phase three. And I don't want them to have a set of expectations that then they're trying to meet. I want them to be open to whatever that opportunity means. One of the most uh, enjoyable things for me about watching students go through JWO and JLO phase is seeing them learn to think on their feet and to use their resources. So uh, developing the confidence to ask questions of each other and to consider their watch as one whole unit. Um, so JLO stands for Junior Lab Officer um, and basically throughout the trip, um, we as students have been working up towards um, gaining these like higher and higher leadership roles. Um, so at this point, you know, we've kind of learned the basics of the lab. Um, we all have a firm grasp on what we're doing. So we kind of take over um, the lab and the assistant scientist steps down. and They're not really going to give you the answer to anything. You have to figure it out for yourself. I'm not nervous about J-Lo Watch. I'm nervous about j Wo. It's a little stressful. Um, so I don't know nearly as much about um, the whole sailing aspect of all of this as I do um, with the science and although I'm getting better it's still a little terrifying to have to you know tell people like oh this is where I want you to go to get this specific thing done. I, I always like forget the names though so I have to think it through beforehand. Ready on the starboard topsail gear? Ready. Ready. All right, ease the sheets, cast off the outhaul, um, haul on the rails, haul on the inhaul, and haul on the cluelin. It's a lot. <laughs> I think often my stereotypical image of leadership is that you kind of have the big picture and concept of what needs to happen down the path. You know the sales, for example, you know the lines, you know the schedule, the routine, you know everything that needs to happen. Um, and I don't. I just simply don't. You know, luckily we've been encouraged to really think about our group members, our shipmates, think about the skills and the knowledge that they possess, and I think. That'll be probably the strategy I'll try to use in, in trying to run the ship for six hours. Hello. I happen to be the uh, J Wo. At the moment, it seems like everything's going pretty smoothly. Good seas, good winds. Okay, what's the wind direction? Um, west, kind of northwest. All right. What's our current sail? We're under the main staysail and the fore staysail. Okay. What would you like to do then for the sailing? Um, I am actually not sure. Did you have any visions for this afternoon? I do. I would say my vision is to keep us moving at five or six knots okay. on the Great Circle route to Iron. Okay. So you'll need to take a look at the course that we can make, how the winds are going to impact the ship, what tack we want to be on for our sails, okay. and then probably set some more sail to keep us moving. Okay. So what, do you, what might you choose to set? Um, our tops could be. Top's a little good one. All right. Yeah, once you make that happen and then see what that does for our speed, and then we can chat again later if we need one. Okay. All right. Good luck. Have a good watch. <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> Feeling a topsail, topsail sail being hoisted, spread in our face. Um, are you guys in the mood for that at the moment? Always. Hello, lovely lady. How goes science? Goes well. <laughs> Sweet. Um, we're gonna set a topsail. Now? Now. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Yeah. Orders and directions. Let's have one person tending the brails. Rocky, will you be on that? You're the best. Um, we are out hauling this thing, so who wants to haul? I can haul. You want to haul? Thanks. Yeah. Would you tend the in-haul? 
or cast off the alcohol. Yeah, I'll help you with the alcohol. And then we'll uh, check him with Rocky, see how he's doing. Cool. And I'm like forgetting something. Ah, moment of showtime. Here we go. Cast off your out haul, haul away your in haul, haul away your brails and your clue. Haul away. Haul away. I've had some hard times getting the tops in certain lines get caught, but that went pretty smoothly. Well done, team. It was good. It was good. <laughs> nice and loud this time. I like it. It's been one of my big things to work on. Yeah. My voice. Yeah, I could definitely <laughs> hear you. I was also right next to you. But. <laughs> It's an interesting stage in the journey. All the students just finished their uh, big assignments last night. They turned in their papers, uh, whether it was for their leadership class or for their science class. And now um, we're gearing up for their uh, multi-watch mission exercise. So this is where we really, in essence, turn over operations of the ship to them. That's gonna culminate in a mission. And we need to think of something for them to do um, across all three watches, all 15 students and they um, have to meet some objectives that we've laid out carefully that's, they're definitely achievable, but it stretches their abilities a little bit. We're closing in on this place where they filmed the last uh, Star Wars movie on the southwest coast of Ireland. So we're thinking about um, giving them a Star Wars mission. That would be kind of neat if we can go looking for Luke Skywalker as our mission. I think we're really good now with, you know, kind of controlling what's going on deck and in lab. Um, and now it's just trying to figure out the steps to kind of like get us there. That's crazy! Wait, what are you guys talking about? If you just look right straight, there. there's like a bunny. Oh, that's <laughs> not a cloud! <laughs> that's a man. Oh my god! I thought that that's was a cloud! A cloud. <laughs> it's so cool though, I can't believe we did it. I mean, I'm really happy we did, but 
<laughs> Cross the whole ocean. something really powerful and cool about this community as we built it. I think, and I feel like I'm just starting to grasp the concepts that we've been talking about. I'm just starting to like, want, like use the lines and see the lines and I like the sea. The sea's really cool. And there's so much to learn, there's so much to grow from and this has been a really special month living with people um, so it'll be a little bit bittersweet it's one thing to just like live in a community but i think it's a much cooler and more interesting thing to live in this community where we all have this common goal of crossing an ocean and i think it really helps form really cool relationships that you cannot get if people are plugged in elsewhere so by not having cell phones access to the outside world everybody's plugged into each other which is really cool and powerful, but it also makes it really sad at the end when the community goes away. But just like a cloud, that is what's so beautiful about it, right? It's got this momentary beauty, and part of that beauty is knowing that it's not gonna last forever. So you have to appreciate it right now, otherwise you'll have missed it. It's a nice feeling to have gotten them safely across the Atlantic. They're all tired and hungry and uh, a little bit dirty, which is great. But for the students, I think after a week or two or maybe a month, they'll start to reflect on their journey in a different way than they are right now. Like, yeah, the, the sea may call some of them back, I'm not sure. I think I have probably changed in ways that I can't even figure out right now that when I get home, my family will be like, whoa, you're like a different person, kind of. Yeah, and I, I found out like a lot about myself and the way that I work as a person and the way that I interact with others. Um, and I think I gained a lot of confidence as well. Everyone in a group, different people will fill different places and you always have your place. I think the last few days of a voyage are always difficult for students. It's really easy when we're at sea to lose track of what day it is and how many days you have left to your voyage and, and that feeling of land that's out there, um, it's not quite real until we, really, we reach the last 24 hours or so. And so as students prepare for Swizzle, our final celebration on board, I think that's finally hit home, that the voyage is over, that this community is unlikely to ever be together again, all of these folks and that this experience that they will carry with them for, for a long time but have a hard time explaining to other people uh, is coming to a close. So it's a chance for a reflection. Um, it's also a chance to sort of celebrate what they've accomplished and this group of people they've shared that with. Everybody really gelled well and, uh, and overcame this task that we had in front of us. So I'm really proud of what we all did. It's really interesting to have that little community that's so tight for, you know, 30 days as we cross the Atlantic to then just kind of disappear. But there's something to be learned from that as well. I think the last day always gives us plenty of things to think about. Um, what the experience was, where we're headed next, um, how to transfer SEA to the rest of our lives in the real world. And that happens for students and crew. Sailing's hard. You learn so much about yourself in the context of the moments of hardship, the moments where you're really laughing, the moments where you're really feeling like frustrated or happy or sad or all of this, it was really powerful. And for me, I really learned how important it is for me to have people in my life who I really care about. Now there's all these new people 
who are going to become part of that later on in my life. I'll think back to this trip, I'll think of these people. I really had something meaningful happen 